This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Support for TV tuners comes from Manscaped, who's the best at men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. But don't take my word for it. Hey, uh, jingle balls to the walls, fellas. Hey, I'm a famous TV and movie actor, Roy Romano, and I'm here to talk about Manscaped. Untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past. It's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. I'm talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package in 2.0. You know, That's when right. we were coming up with Everybody Loves Raymond, all the executives were like, what would make someone loved by all? And you know what they came up with? Perfect shaved, balls. Sa- per- shaved genitals? Yes, and as the only man in Hollywood with naturally smooth testicles... I was a shoe-in for the lead. You're the only and man not... in Hollywood with te- testicles that are shaved? Yes. No, they're naturally shaved. That's why I am here to promote this product. You're someone who doesn't need it and you're promoting yes, it? Yes, it's that good. All right, well, tell us about Look it. Look at the... They've got the revolutionary electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary advanced skin safe technology, so this trimmer won't nick or snag your nuts. I know plenty of guys who've accidentally castrated themselves trying to get a roll on Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah, it happened to Jesse Ventura. It's very tragic how he had to get prosthetic testicles. How, I, how, how do those work? Well, he had to go down to Central America since that's the only place where they're legal. You know, the ones that actually function properly. They they function? Oh, well, okay. they produce synthetic ejaculate. <laughs> Alright, but it's not just the Llama or 2.0 in this one, is it? No, there's also the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0, including the Crop Preserver, the Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant, and Moisturizer. Let me tell you, chafing is so important to avoid and not have... So you uh, you don't want chafing. All right. Yes, I'm going to write that down. I've seen so many actors and actresses get kicked off productions for having chafed genitals. But how many of them get kicked off of productions for having stinky balls? About 30% more. More? About 60% wow. for chafing, 30% for smelly. Wow, okay. And the crop preserver will also help with that, right? Yes. As you know, the drunk is the smelliest part of the body. That's what they always say. So, tis the season to get manscaped for your brother, your dad, and friends, and it's the best gift of all. And it also comes with a pair of manscaped boxer briefs that'll keep your junk feeling fresh all day. All day? As 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 opposed to mine, which don't? No. Okay. Yours just smell like fabric and absorb sweat. Yeah, Keo, I hate to tell this to you, but your balls stink, bro. These blocks ah. of briefs were made by NASA. Oh, shit. <laughs> that's that's pretty impressive. You know, they couldn't clean themselves very well in the Apollo lander. Because they couldn't take showers. They had to rub them down with paper towels that were scented. Well, how do you get this exclusive Manscaped offer? Oh, well, hit up at Manscaped.com with the promotional code. Big heads. Big heads. <laughs> <laughs> Your balls will thank you. That's right. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BIGHEADS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code BIGHEADS. Debra! Hi there, folks, and welcome to TV Tuners. It's a television podcast for the true fanatics. It's a weekly dive into the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson. With me, as always, is shoe surgeon, Stairmaster. It's a complicated profession. Oh, yeah? Tell me more. Shoe surgeon, 
we are twin, from which we transport ourselves from one space to another, in a way it binds all humans to each other and their world. Natural world. Hmm. Well, I'm definitely interested to talk more about that. But first, let's introduce our other co-host and uh, owner of an ice cream truck, Kioran. Hey, uh, Swanson, I have a little treat for you right here. Oh, it's peach ice cream. I remember this from my youth. Now let's focus on me talking about my youth for the next two minutes to fill time. Yeah? Did you have a, did you have a pet dog? No. I had a pet crab. Oh, that wow, dog? that's exotic. That's interesting, actually. Did you know the crabs did, are did, basically did... sea spiders? I did know that because I had a pet crab. Wow. Well, you by that you mean they both have a lot of limbs on them? Mm-hmm. They I also mean, they're like yeah, evolutionarily they're... related. Yeah, and they lay a lot of eggs. <laughs> they really act like spiders, related. though. Well, that's because they live in well, the yeah, sea. They're, they have they're all arthropods. But, I mean, like, crabs don't, like, they're not really hunters. They're more scavengers. The biggest difference between spiders and crabs, of course, is that uh, the eyes of a crab is not located on their butt. Mm-hmm. Wait, is and that true? Spiders don't dance, either, on the beach. Mm, true. Yeah. They don't get really excited when, like, some news item has has been <laughs> released. Like, John, they're really waiting for John McCain to die. Yeah. Before they start dancing. <laughs> Anyway, uh, welcome to TV Tuners, the television podcast for all of you who love TV. Love and, and crabs. Yeah, who love TV and crabs. All of you who have crabs. Oh, we should have a crab podcast. We should have a pet crab, and then we can make it the mascot. Oh yeah, the TV Tuners crab. <laughs> we'll probably give him a name, like, TV related. Oh, I see, we would name him Reggie. Oh, Okay, I mean, that's fine. I, I okay, thought, we can name him Norm. <laughs> Are you happy? I wanted to name him Omar so that when he showed up, we would say Omar coming. <laughs> Wait, he, he'd like be able to walk around the studio? Yes. As he wishes? Yeah. You, you huh. want to keep this crab locked up? He's an outdoors crab. Yeah. I was thinking we keep him in like a tank or something, uh, you know? Maybe. Where, where there's water... Oh, uh, maybe. We'll see. We'll play it by ear. Anyway, uh, if you like what you've heard so far, and you think it's time, why not go over to any of the podcatchers of your choice, and give us a good old subscribe. We're available on uh, Google Play, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and more. Manscaped.com uh, Yeah, we're on the front page. You can give us a five-star review, and it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and as always, we are available on Twitter, the Tweet Machine. You can find us at TV Tuners. Ooh, if you, you can hit us up with comments, questions, com- concerns, foresight, or otherwise. That's right. You can do that uh, by using the hashtag TV Tuners as well, and we'll give a glance at what you're saying. Or, of course, at our email address at TV Tuners Podcast at gmail.com. What's that email, Kioran? Um, television crab at hotmail.net. That's right. Yeah, you can be like Andrew, who sent us a letter this week that says, mm-hmm. Eponymous, Watchman Watch. Oh, this is going to be tough. Well, actually, Dr. Manhattan's dad is a watchmaker. <laughs> Andrew. Andrew, Eastern Canada. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, yeah I that guess is true. A- this is a good time to ask uh, if, you've watched, if you've watched any more Watchmen, Star Master. I just haven't since episode two. Uh, so I, I guess it was watched... a tune out after all. <laughs> I watched episode three. Uh, it can it remains to be a show where I'm like enjoying it, and then I wonder if I'm actually going to end like the ending at all. Ah, <laughs> uh, probably not. I don't. I don't like it when a show makes me worry about the ending <laughs> when I'm not even halfway through it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted when I decide to watch more of it. Anyway, uh, let's move on to what you guys watched this week. Anything fun? Oh, I watched uh, Hotel Mumbai. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> it was not fun. Well, uh, why don't you give us a rundown on what happens in this one? 
<laughs> okay, so there's these guys, and they have AK-47s. <laughs> and they go into this hotel to start shooting people. <laughs> Sounds compelling. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Dev Patel is just trying to survive. Dev He's Patel guy... is in this? Yes. From uh, Some Dog Billionaire. Yeah. I think it's so, like the biggest name in that movie. This was a. So do you title title your movie like Hotel Something to show that something bad's going to happen in it? Oh, well, I mean. <laughs> yes, I guess. I don't like that. I mean, a movie titled Hotel California. Oh, I guess Jason Isaac was in this. Alright, so, but uh, what, what did you think of it overall? Oh, it was very cringe. Yeah? <laughs> Watching all those people get shot. <laughs> and all the white and all the rich white people kept leaving their safety and <laughs> getting owned. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. <sighs> Isn't Hotel California a song? Yes, not a but movie, it's also it... a bad place to be from what I my understanding of the lyrics yes and the song the song is a sort of uh hotel california is a sort of purgatory cue right yes oh i don't like that at all that sounds bad yeah yes you can no escape you can check in anytime you want but you can never leave swanson am i permitted (laughs) swanson am i allowed to talk about a talk about a movie Uh, well well, you did is it is it evening installation did you watch it again (laughs) No, but I did watch uh, The Irishman. I think it is what what? Oh, uh, Stare, did you watch The Irishman? Is that what you want to say? Yes, I did. I watched it with my mom. It was good. Yeah, I've been meaning to watch it, but uh, it's a, a bit of a time investment. <laughs> it's a very chunky movie. I watched a movie called The Last Heist. Oh, oh boy, that's interesting. Is this, is this anything like Evening Installation? Uh, it, by that. Do you mean, is it bad? Yes. Well, it's had some Wikipedia entry, so... <laughs> it was quite bad. Oh, no. The so, film has uh, been critically planned as a 3.4 out of 10 on IMDb, and 0% the, uh, out of 8 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. What's the deal with this I movie, can... <laughs> Kiora? Okay, so first of all, whoever wrote the script just learned the F-bomb <laughs> before writing it. Oh, <laughs> Oh yeah, Henry Rollins is in this. That's a serial killer. A man who uh, knows his way around an F bomb. <laughs> uh, ironically, he doesn't say, he swear at all because he's a strange religious serial killer <laughs> who takes out people's eyeballs. What does this have to do with a heist? He's there during the heist, and somehow he kills like half of the <laughs> robbers. <laughs> oh, so so like wait, he's the hero. Up. Uh, he wins at the end of the movie. Spoilers. Oh, say, so this is like a weird version from Dusk Till Dawn with serial killers instead of vampires. And the vampires win? Yeah, uh, he wins at the end and he just kind of walks away. The police are there, but they're completely ineffectual the whole time. <laughs> and Sort of like the police every... in Hotel Mumbai. <laughs> and every single conflict that they have could have been resolved by communicating with each other. Like... He's like the serial killer is in the room killing somebody, and the lady's like, "There's a man in here. He's got a knife. He's killing me." And they're like, "Huh, that's <laughs> interesting. Let's just ignore that." Oh, she's probably faking it. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there's multiple times where people have a gun pointed at the killer, and they just don't shoot him because that would. <laughs> so I found a review from uh, Simon Abrams of RogerEbert.com. Uh, oh. uh-huh. And he gave this one star and said, uh, and I want to see if you agree with this, Kieran. The movie feels like it ran out of money on day two, and everybody but the people in front of the camera knew it. Yeah, uh, for example, the cops are called, uh, <laughs> the cops called. in this in, in this armed uh, conflict where uh, there's like ten robbers with uh, automatic weapons. They bring like three cop cars <laughs> and only have them in front of the building. <laughs> Okay, so this would have this movie would have made more sense if there had been like a scene of the robber shooting a minigun at them, a la T two. Yeah, that would have slightly. Been... It would have been slightly more believable. Also, there were t- there were two twists. Ooh. Oh, dang! No, actually, three twists. Okay, happened. triple spoiler twist. Warning. Spoiler warning: Jump ahead ninety seconds if you don't want to get spoiled on this film. On this cinematic uh, thriller. 
so the the first twist is that and we're supposed to care about this for some reason after just meeting these characters but uh the robber and the guy working at the bank are brothers and we're supposed to be like shocked and (laughs) care about this that seems like a very common thing to do for heists (laughs) yeah uh the second twist is that the weird guy who was getting something out of the deposit box is a serial killer. <laughs> well, that is... I mean, in a better movie, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, it, this guy was, like, basically a god. He could, like, basically <laughs> teleport... He could teleport via air ducts. Oh, so it's like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees. Yeah, ex- except he uh, doesn't have any supernatural powers as far as... <laughs> well, neither did Michael Myers, who's... Well, it was very ambiguous with Michael Myers. So I did some looking around uh, at the plot of this, Keo Ryan. Is this true that the serial killer is carrying a jar of eyes with him? Yeah, uh, and he takes out the eyes of all the victims at the bank. Uh, Does he have to get a second jar? I think he has like a bag of jars with him or something. That seems like a bad idea. If I were a serial killer, I might not carry around the evidence. Oh, all serial killers want to get caught, except for the ones. Well, that he was store. He was storing the eyeballs in a safety deposit box. Yeah, they legally for can't s- open those. Yeah, I guess that's and, uh, one even way. Even if they of smell the it. eyeballs. And, and the third twist, and the most baffling one, is that so the cops are called, and they they call in some specialists who aren't SWAT, and there's l- allegedly with the Department of Defense. Oh, these are the criminal but, minds, guys. Uh, I don't know what that means, but they turn out to be the members of, quote, the cartel. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> they they bring in these, these guys who are like, uh, they say they're better than SWAT. They're like the guys who SWAT calls in when the situation's too intense. This is the SWAT of SWAT. But that's what they said, yeah. And But it turns out they're members of the cartel. <laughs> So, see, hmm. so they don't explain how that happened. <laughs> That's pretty. Uh, so okay, overall, Kiorain, is this better or worse than Evening Installation? Uh I would say it's a little bit better because at least it has action in it. Mm, okay, so Evening Installation was just that man overacting for an hour. I have an idea. And we can delete this if this doesn't pan out. But this week, Keo should watch Hotel Mumbai, and I watch this movie, and we talk about which one's more painful to watch. Okay. <laughs> oh boy, challenge accepted. All right. Well, uh, I also have a movie to discuss, which isn't The Uh-oh. Irishman. Uh, I can't believe Swanson watched a movie. Yeah, I mean, I can also give a shout out to a TV show, The Good Place. It's still good. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, um, there's just not much else I have to say about The Good Place, so I figured I'd mention this movie. I watched uh, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, the Mr. Rogers pseudo-biopic. It's not really a biopic at all, actually. He's sort of just there. Okay, how many sex scenes are in this biopic? Um, Zero, but there is a scene of a man and his wife in bed, but it's not Mr. Rogers. So does Mr. Rogers even look at someone romantically? I mean, his wife is there. But they don't procreate. <laughs> On screen, no. That's not even implied. I mean, he mentions his son, so yes, it is implied, I guess. Oh, there's no, like, shots of a shaking pinball machine or anything? <laughs> no, nothing like that. Uh, no, Mr. Rogers is sort of like the, uh, the mythical figure in this one. Oh. Um... Who helps the, he the, the main the character? War? No, in fact, he actually uh, <laughs> they actually deny they actually uh, make a point of uh, of denying the rumors that he was like a sharpshooter in the military. Unlike the Irishman, which affirms a conspiracy theory that the mob killed JFK. Do you, Do you think the mob killed Mister Rogers? Perhaps, you know, probably. Did he climb through any air ducts? Uh, No air ducts in this one, although there is an extended sequence where the main character, who is a reporter, sent to uh, talk to... Eliminate. (laughs) Sent sent to do a piece on Mr. Rogers, has an extended mental breakdown that involves being part (laughs) 
of the show, uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, which is what? perhaps the most fun part. It feels like I'm watching a uh, piece, uh, like a, a, a Andy Kaufman movie. Okay, why did he have a mental breakdown? Charlie Kaufman, a Charlie Kaufman movie. Uh, he had a mental breakdown because uh, his father was dying. Oh, was Mr. Rogers responsible? Mr. Rogers was not responsible, although he does show up uh, to help with the grieving process. Oh, because Mr. Rogers is a, a a nice guy, apparently, as it turned out. Anyway, uh, there's some shots of Pittsburgh, so I guess that's kind of cool if you're into that. Uh, Mr. Rogers. Well, I have one more thing to say about uh, the last heist. Okay, yeah. And it's it's the thing that baffled me the most out of the film. There's this there's this guy. He's the getaway driver. And he's out front doing cocaine. <laughs> That's a bad getaway driver. <laughs> and the cops show up and they're immediately like suspicious of him. Because he's doing cocaine. <laughs> yeah, and they don't immediately call backup. Yeah, that's... even though there's like even though they got a call that there's a robbery going on, there's this man in a van who's tweaking out on cocaine. <laughs> Maybe they just assumed he was a crack a coke fiend. Yeah, it's normal. Bank, banks and coke fiends sort of go hand in hand, Kieran. You know, you're not wrong. Okay, but so later on in the film, he like rushes the cops and gets shot <laughs> twice in the chest. Mm, okay, he gets shot twice in the chest, like the kind of kind of shooting that would basically instantly kill you. Mm-hmm, yes. So he's so he falls to the ground and like oh he's dead, but several minutes later he's alive. Oh, he probably did some more cocaine. And I restored his <laughs> health bar. <laughs> yeah, that, it it does that. That's part of the uh, magical effects of cocaine. And so, the, this this guy who was like in the army or something gives him like a field medic treatment somehow mm-hmm. for two bullets to the chest. And he 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 basically they said he's barely breathing, and then two seconds later he's walking. <laughs> They walk him over to the police to do like a hostage exchange or something. Does he immediately uh, get killed by the serial killer? No, I think he's the only one who survives the whole thing. <laughs> okay, that's all I had to say. Sorry, I had to get that off. Oh, my so chest. it's like the serial killer in Con Air. Or wait, no, that doesn't make any sense because. <laughs> well, I guess it does. No. Anyway, the Mister Rogers movie was good. <laughs> Did it make you smile and laugh? Uh, it made me smile. I don't know if there was really any laughs in it. Tom Hanks is fun, as he always is. The end. Wait, who does Tom Hanks play? He plays Mr. Rogers. Okay, that's good. And to be clear, he never leaps out of an air duct and kills someone with a knife. Uh, no. actually, We never. do not get to see Mr. Rogers' dick in this film. Correct. No dick of anybody in this film. Does he ever, like, uh, do any pelvic thrusts or anything like that? No. I mean, he wears a pup. He has a puppet at one point. Does that count? Mm, yes. Okay. So, what 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 actually happens in the movie, though? Uh, it's mainly the reporter trying to find something negative about Mr. Rogers failing, having a mental breakdown because of his own personal life, and then Mr. Rogers sort of helping him through it. Ah, oh, so the government That's put nice. him there to discredit Mr. Rogers. More like, he, more like he takes it upon himself to find something with Mr. Rogers that he can write about that's interesting. So basically, the conclusion is Mr. Rogers was a perfect man. No, no they don't really do that either. <laughs> oh, what do they do? Uh, they just make they they just make a story around around Mr. Rogers without actually having to do a biopic of an extremely average per well average life i guess in terms of like <laughs> nothing exciting drum dramatic wise has happened to mr rogers because, because he's you, the perfect man well yeah you can't well more like you can't do a biopic about a guy who's like did everything right did, did yeah like for the most part i guess they, they should have just they should have surprised us all and, and given us a 90 minute film of him as a sniper and <laughs> war war. crimes the closest thing we get in the movie to a negative impression of Mr. Rogers is that uh, he spends a lot of no, he spends a lot of time uh, holding up his cast and crew doing shoots. 
mainly because he's like ta- whenever there's a child on the set he's talking with him constantly for like l- way longer than the shot requires but there's it's also balanced out with a scene of him trying to uh put put up a tent and failing miserably and then he keeps <laughs> it in the show because he because he figured the one take was good enough <laughs> I want to see him put up a tent and fail and then, like, start powering up. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, like, his hair goes golden. Yeah, like, w- with an intense aura as, like, dramatic music plays and we see, like, a, a wide shot of the landscape being torn I apart by his what energy. I reference to. <laughs> and it's revealed, uh, it's revealed that Mr. Rogers is from an ancient alien race. This is, uh, we're talking about the anime program Bleach. Oh, what's it about? Oh, well, Swanson can tell you all about that. Well, I can't wait for Mr. Rogers to unleash his bankai. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rogers basically is the uh, shady hat guy. You think? Shopkeeper man, <laughs> yes. You're the one who likes the show. Shouldn't you know that guy's name? <laughs> uh, if I said it, you wouldn't recognize it. <laughs> uh, fair point. And you would just get mad Nobody in the entire world would get it except for, except for me. Yeah, yeah we absolutely the only one. have zero Bleach fans listening to this right now. Keo's the only one who knows what Bleach is. Anyway, let's head into the news, huh? Uh, I guess. There's been news. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so Thanksgiving occurred uh, recently, mm. which means that news has been rather slow. But that doesn't mean oh. that we haven't been talking about the one thing on everyone's mind. Oh, how was your Thanksgiving, Swanson? It was okay. The Walking Dead! Wait, wait, how was your Thanksgiving, Keo? <laughs> Great! Uh, I woke up at 3 a.m. after Thanksgiving and was, like, bowled over on my toilet, suffering the most unimaginable pain possible. That sounds like, awful. Like, I broke into a sweat and had trouble sitting up. So you would say that at that point you had wished you were part of The Walking Dead? <laughs> yes, I was The Walking Dead. Swanson's really trying to get us back on course here. He does not want to talk about the holidays. Um, More like it came at a very weird time to bring it up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, my Thanksgiving was great, Swanson. You want to hear all about it right now? At this exact time? Tell us us everything you ate in great detail. Uh, There, it was a Thanksgiving feast. There was a, there was turkey. Uh Uh-huh. Yams. Uh huh. Ooh, yams. Mashed potatoes. Sounds yeah, good. that's. Uh, we gotta have all right, it. hold on. Answer the question. We're all wondering were there scallop potatoes? No, there was mashed potatoes. Well, you can have both. <laughs> no, there was just mashed potatoes there. Mm. No good. I give your uh-huh. Thanksgiving dinner a 7 out of 10. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually had scallop potatoes for Thanksgiving. Well, I guess cheesy potatoes are also similar to that. Hmm. Uh, I think there, I think there was cheese on the potatoes. Oh, okay. Uh, eight out of ten. <laughs> you really like cheese, huh? I mean, I just you know, cheese and potatoes are a good uh, combo. He's what about the desserts, Kiora? Hit us up with the desserts. Uh, th- there was a pie. Yes, there was a was pumpkin also, pie. We also had an apple pie. Oh, yeah. I love a good apple pie. The apple pie we had was not good. Oh, no. A family member who I was unaware of brought... Came in it. I might as well have. <laughs> the key to a good apple pie, in my opinion, is a good balance of apple and a crumb. This was just complete apple with, like, minimal crumb. Uh... If I wanted to eat a whole apple, I would eat a whole apple. Well, I mean, I like to just eat an apple by itself for dessert. At Thanksgiving? <laughs> yeah, that's what we call a feast. I take the apple right out of the pig's head that's on the table <laughs> and just eat that. Oh, interesting. The pig, that, of course, is on a spike. As as yeah. is custom for Thanksgiving, yes. Yeah. Anyway, The Walking with fl- Dead. With, with flies buzzing around it. Truly a Thanksgiving institution. Uh, Walking uh, Dead is preparing for yet another spinoff when we talked about previously on the show. A, uh, do they have a Thanksgiving special for Walking Dead? Yeah, they all sit down and they <laughs> eat a zombie. <laughs> that would turn them into a zombie, wouldn't it? Well, they're already part of nope. already They already got the disease. So. I mean, they would die from food poisoning. Oh. 
Well, I guess we'll have to find out next post Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> anyway, um, so yes, there is a new Walking Dead show coming. One focused on teenagers. Uh, Teens. When we watched the show for when we watched the trailer for for Trailer Blazers, the show was still not named. That has changed. Oh boy, what's the name? So, uh, yes, the Walking Dead show has gotten its new name, and I have here a list of four names. Ooh. I'm going to uh, say oh, them so all Oh, so it's out. like the Irishman with multiple names, huh? Sure. Uh, I'm going to uh, say all four of them, and then you two are going to pick the one you think is the name. Okay. Oh. I'm I'm fully ready for this. All right. The Walking Dead, World Beyond. <laughs> oh boy. The Walking Dead, Dead is better. <laughs> oh god. The Walking Dead, Teenage Wasteland. Oh no. <laughs> and last but not least, Chase the Walking Dead. Oh man. I'm a little bit torn here. I'm going to oh, go with the no. World Beyond. Uh, that's that not, is so accurate. stupid what? that it should, probably isn't. But Chase the Walking Dead is also very a very strong uh, Hmm. What was the first one? That was The Walking Dead World Beyond. Oh man. Uh I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with um <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with Teen Wasteland on this. <laughs> All right. Give me Teen Wasteland. That's a song by the Who. <laughs> I know. I mean, you don't think they would? You don't think they would stoop that low to use a song by the Who? I think they're cat. I was gonna say I think they're cowards, but maybe. maybe well, they're, they're not that much of cowards. Stairmaster, you won the game. It is The Walking Dead: World Beyond. Yeah. World Beyond what? I'm not sure. <laughs> I guess World Beyond like the society. Wall. The town they're in. Yeah, they lived in a society. And now they, well, but from the trailer we watched, they live in yet another society. This one just has zombies outside. Mm. But see, the, Unbelievable. the show's about them going outside. Oh yeah, to the world beyond. <laughs> anyway, uh, I look forward to watching uh, The Walking Dead Beyond Thunderdome, and that appears uh, sometime in 2020. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Are we going to watch that on the show, Swanson? Is that what's going to happen? Yes. No, I'm pretty sure you guys will immediately veto it in favor of whatever else we could watch. <laughs> we'll just watch like a Dylan McDermott show instead. I wish there was a Dylan McDermott <laughs> That's show. That's only for airs us to watch. in Estonia. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's taken to doing exclusively work in Estonia. <laughs> They're the only people who will hire him now. Yeah, we miss you, Dylan. Friend of the podcast, Dylan McDermott. Dylan, like, come out with a new show where you're like a dentist or something. But uh, also, you have to stop terrorism. <laughs> yeah, there's like some kind of like tooth related terror. That's the name of the show, the the only... Tooth Terror. <laughs> Bite down you're on you're the terror. Only... You're the only man who can stop him. No, I, I think that's a bit too creative. It would just be like dentist or something. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that it would be. The name of the show is the doctor. <laughs> the name of the show is the doctor. will see you. The doctor will see you now. Yes, Dylan McDermott, star of Hostage and Stalkers. <laughs> if there's one thing that's that's proven to be more popular than The Walking Dead, it's The Mandalorian, Disney Plus's <laughs> show uh, that has mostly been known for Baby Yoda memes. Baby Yoda, hey, when does this take place? This takes place after uh, Return of the Jedi, so Yoda's dead. What? So why is he a baby? Explain. Uh, it's just his race. Explain. Explain it, liberal. It is just a Yoda monster. Not. Oh, Yoda so it's not himself. actually. It's not actually Yoda. It's it's just. It's just his, his race that doesn't have a name, a so they Yoda call him beast. Baby Yoda. I thought Yoda was like like a mutant or something. Like the like he just looks like that. An eight hundred year old human. No, he's just That's a four hundred year old alien. Things. No, he is We're, definitely eight hundred years old. Well, he's dead now, so I guess he doesn't matter what age he was. We need, we need some more some like deep lore on his race. To be honest, 
do not like he's he's from a planet that like got exploded or something, right? Uh, That's why he's probably. The only I don't one. know. The lore is not clear. <laughs> anyway, uh, naturally, uh, with a big machine behind it like Disney, you would expect Baby Yoda merch to already be ready to hit the shelves. You would think they would have it done before the show's even out. That is not the case. <gasps> they have failed us. Supposedly, multi multiple retail outlets have. Uh, told the various news sources that the baby yoda they've been told that baby yoda will not be available in any form for the christmas season so does that mean that the corporate machine failed to realize how popular it would be uh actually in this case it was that the corporate machine decided to uh observe the wishes of the showrunner for the mandalorian john favreau who uh, does, who wanted to keep the character a secret for as long as possible, which meant that they could not put into production uh, any toys without it getting out before the release of the show. Hubris. Utter hubris. <laughs> for once, I am saddened by capitalist, by capital, the capitalist lack of performance. They, been, they will eat their own shoe on this. As I had once before. Well, it's probably going to pay off later when, now that the hype has been built by this Baby Yoda experience, they're going to sell twice as many little but plushies you, of them. You have forgotten Black Friday sales. It's fine. But I mean, there's also Star Wars Day, which is not the day that happens. <laughs> that's just, there is no such thing as Star Wars Day. You are simply making that up. What do you mean, do May not. the 4th? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I am so done with this world. <laughs> wow. wow he went into space amazing anyway yeah uh currently there is no plans for some baby yoda toys but uh hasbro has confirmed that they will be seeing you will be seeing it just not quite yet uh meanwhile you can swanson, go on you know, we have, yeah. you know what we have to do swanson What's that we're gonna have to bootleg some right now <laughs> Well, well, we're not the only ones who have to bootleg some you can just go on pinterest right now and find like 15 baby yodas Okay, what's your Baby Yoda t-shirt going to look like? It's going to be a p- picture of Baby Yoda, but what's it gonna, What's his quote going to be? Oh, well, mine's going to be... Uh, it's just going to be the Barack Obama change, but it's just Baby Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. That's like some brilliant political satire. <laughs> baby, I am! Lovely. Maybe... Mine's and, gonna... and, and I don't know. I, should it still say change? Maybe it says force on it. I don't know. No, it says change. Change. You see, yeah, that's perfect, Swanson. Well, yeah, because you got to change his diaper. Oh. Yeah, m- mine's gonna say pee pee poo poo. Mm. So it's just Ooh, a picture. Of, <laughs> it's just a picture of Baby Yoda, and above it, it says pee pee, and at the bottom, it says poo poo. Yeah. That's what I think of this whole situation. Mm, to wake you at this ungodly hour. Sorry, I am, mother. How many Shit people do you think would wear a shirt? How many people do you think would wear a shirt with a baby Yoda on it that said pee pee poo poo? <laughs> Milkies, I want. <laughs> oh, that's a good one just by itself. <laughs> baby Yoda that says that's... Milkies, I want. No, it just says Milkies, yeah. I want on the t shirt and nothing else. <laughs> yeah, no baby Yoda needed for that one. <laughs> yeah. That would be great for your Tinder profile, a picture of you wearing that. Uh, I think what I would like is a, sh- uh, a picture of Baby Yoda, and it says, you will experience maximum pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> How about Baby Yoda, and he's hanging from a tree, and it says, hang in there. And also, it's not a t-shirt, it's a poster instead. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd also, the star like is beneath him. That's something that's going to be sold on the market by me very soon. Yeah, I think we can all sort of look forward to that. Uh, And of course, yes, you can uh, look forward to all of these baby Yodas to soon overtake uh, the collection of Porgs that you've all slowly been building. (laughs) Did anyone actually get into Porgs? I'm sure there are people who liked Porgs. I mean, I liked them. They were cute. You know what I'm excited for, like, to the extreme in relation to this what's that i'm waiting for the baby yoda funko pops uh, to come out oh, how, will you, how will you tell them apart from regular yoda funko how will pops? you tell baby yoda apart from yoda i don't know he's he's smaller <laughs> but they're all they're all the same size no, this yoda's smaller 
Baby there's, Yoda does already look sort head. of like a Funko Pop of Yoda, so I guess it's <laughs> sort of a muted effort. Oh, that's a new product. Funko Pops for your Funko Pops. <laughs> oh, yeah, get exhibited your, in on that. Your Kurosaki Ichigo Funko Pop has a collection of, like, Star Wars little mini Funko fun- fun- Pops. Yeah. You're opening a whole new universe of Funko Pop <laughs> that I'm really excited for. Yeah, we better call Mr. Funko. <laughs> yeah, we gotta pitch this. Alright, well, that's it for the news. So it's time for us to head into a segment uh, we haven't done in a while, but one that is near and dear to our hearts. It's fact or opinion! Hit the theme, stare! All right, welcome to Factor Opinion. Uh, for those who are unaware of this segment, who have been hiding for the past year or so, um, haven't sure. listened to, haven't listened that far back, have been in a cave like Swanson. It's definitely been not that. It hasn't been that long. I don't think since we've done this. It's it's been ten years, Swanson, since we did Factor Opinion. Been doing it podcast. And that's that a long? fact. That's a yeah, that's a fact. Wow. I wrote that down right right here on the paper. See, this is where all the facts are on this paper. Yeah. I guess I can't argue with you looking that. Looking at, I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah. So, yeah. factor opinion. I'm going to ask my my two uh, subordinates here a question. I'm going to ask. Uh, us? Yeah, you oh. two are my subordinates. Are the subordinates. I'm going to ask you if the statement I made is a factor in opinion, and you're going to answer. All right. Uh, sounds good. All right. Uh, green is a color. Factor opinion. Fact. Hmm. It's there. Ah, uh, it's also like a thing that you can be. Expand on that opinion. <laughs> like green energy yeah, I mean, isn't green, so that that's makes- true. Green green energy is actually completely colorless. It's it's not associated with any particular color. Yeah, the reason it's called green energy is because it uh, helps the environment. And the environment is not green. The environment uh, some is a would bunch say, of colors. Yeah, some would say the majority of the environment is in fact green, though. Like actually, grass, I would say it's trees. I would say I would say it's blue, since the ocean. Most of the, most of the environment is blue. A, a lot of it is like brownish. The water the water so, is not part of the environment. Who cares? The envir- the water is the biggest part of the environment. No, that's part of the earth. Different. <laughs> Swanson, uh, Swanson, most of the earth is is uh, water. And there's a lot of like little fishmen in the water, fishmen, and yeah, they came and those are important. So, so Stare gets the point on this one. Green is not a color. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. All right. So how about how, how about this one? Paper towels are very important. Factor opinion. Fact. Mm, this depends on what sort of paper towels. Hmm. What do you mean? What sort of paper towels? I mean, how suitable? I mean, some paper towels can be used to wipe down your balls. Paper towels. Which are are it... <laughs> Factor opinion, stare. Uh, opinion. Ooh. Okay, you're gonna have to give me a really good case for this. Some paper towels are just too thin, and if you try to wipe your balls down with them, they'll like dissolve from the sweat. Okay. Why not use the ones that are good? Well, those ones are useful. But what if you don't have them? Okay, so you admitted that I said, it was a... I said paper. <laughs> I, I said paper. I said paper towels are important. I didn't say they're all useful. Oh. Stare, I'm sorry, but uh, Swanson gets the point on this one. You guys are tied now. Oh, it's a close race. All right, how about this one? The moon is delicious. Mm. Back to your opinion. Mm, opinion. Hmm. Okay, stare. Uh, fact. Okay, why is the moon delicious? Somebody once told me the moon was made of pepperoni. Who? who? Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious about this myself. <laughs> they also told me that the world was going to roll me. Huh. But were you the... What? Okay, but who? what was the sharpest tool in the shed? Uh, my head trimmers, which I stabbed him with. Oh. So you killed down. you killed this you killed this important source of information right there on the spot. This information like seems too dangerous to be allowed into the public. Okay, well, uh, I would like to refer to. Uh, Which is why I have to kill you now with these head trimmers. 
Oh. Wait for the segment to be over. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would like to refer to uh, Neil Armstrong, who in his biography wrote that he had taken a chunk of uh, moon and tried to eat it and found it quite distasteful. Mm. What did he say it tasted like? Dust. Ugh. But you know, <sighs> you know, Buzz Aldrin did snort a line of the moon dust. Yeah, and now he's Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> Isn't that a different type of flavor when you think about it? I mean, smell and uh, taste are very linked. I don't think so. You if it's good to snort stuff, something, with, that's basically smelling it really hard. Oh, oh, you, you Swanson, you know you what? Think you know what, Swanson? Smelling. You, hold on. You think sm- snorting something is smelling it really hard? Yes. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> Swanson, uh, stare gets the point. That's how you smell things, is by inhaling their particles. Also, I forgot to mention that the terms uh, for this one is that the loser gets crushed by a giant piston. <laughs> oh, I wonder what that was doing here. Oh. Yeah, uh, so stare's winning so far, and uh, there's going to be five questions. Uh, oh, all right. So Swan- Swanson, the, the pressure's really on for you right now. You, you understand what's going to happen if stare gets the next one. Next one right. Well, I mean, right? I'm going to kill you both with a hedge trimmer anyways, so. Well, that seems like a, that seems yeah. like a poor tactic to mention it before the, the <laughs> I already did. Before the game is over. <laughs> well, I would do it now, but Kyo told me I couldn't. Stare, like, you're not going to want to do that because you know those videos on YouTube of things getting squashed? <laughs> yes. Yes, we're going to do that. <gasps> oh, man, that'd be awesome. Can we squash my hedge yeah. trimmers? We can. We can do that before we squash Swanson. Smash your head trimmers. Jo- <laughs> <laughs> Swanson, Swanson, Swanson can enjoy that with us before we Yo, die. who's this man behind That's the a- piston? Oh, it's a guy from the Hydraulic Press YouTube. Today we're smashing head wow. trimmers. <laughs> well, if he said so. What a guy. Okay, are you guys ready for the next question? Sure. You you prepared? Yeah, okay. You, do you have your you have your goggles on? Yes. All right. Uh, the sun gets cold during winter. Factor opinion. During what? During winter. Mm. Well, we all know the sun goes out when the night time comes. Factor opinion. And the night- Fact. <laughs> Opinion. Mm. I want you guys to both state your case. I'm not. I'm not going to make any suggestion as to which one's right or wrong at this at this juncture. Well, nights longer during the winter, and everything gets colder at night. Yeah, because the sun isn't there. Yeah, the sun's in the the sun isn't in the sky anymore. So it's it not got warm. cold. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, the sun got cold. Yeah, the sun got cold. That's why it went below the horizon. No, listen. It's like a hot air balloon. But the air got cold, so it went down. No, no, no. See, the sun remains hot. Oh? But the earth moves away from the sun. Hmm? Why would it do that? It's repulsed. Then it cold. <laughs> it's repulsed? Yes, that's right. The sun at the sun at a certain time in the year gets a temperature to it, or gets a smell to it that uh, the Earth isn't very fond of, and so it pushes away. Mm. This is this is brilliant. Are you saying that the sun is in desperate need of Manscaped's Perfect Package 2.0, <laughs> which also includes the crop preserver? I would say it uh, very much needs the crop preserver, yes. Unfortunately, Manscaped has not had the resources yet to uh, provide the sun with a big enough supply of crop preserver. Their space program just isn't off the ground yet. <laughs> yeah, and so we will have to suffer uh, through winter, many winter years. Okay, well, Swanson, uh, you get the point here. You, you guys are You guys are tied now. Wow, oh. that hydraulic press is really looking threatening now. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Now, you guys are going to... This is going to be a very difficult question for for, uh, for you to break on here. You guys are going to have to really think this one over. Uh, 
Be very, be very careful. Okay. Key cards are the best way to get inside of a room. Fact. Fact. Fuck. Ooh. <laughs> All right, well, state your cases. I mean, a key card... The winner's the one who gets the better explanation. Swiping a key card is so much funner than using just a key. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, thinking about it from a security perspective, of course, you would want a key, but a key card is, of course, so much easier. If you miss a key card, just print out a new key card. Okay, but also... It takes so much longer to print out a key. If you have a key card, you can pretend you're Solid Snake. (gasps) Oh! Swanson, I'm sorry, buddy. You didn't but, even uh, give me a chance to this... rebut, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> There's okay, Swanson. I'm going to give you a, a a very brief chance to rebut that. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Get this. Key cards also good for breaking into things with the with no key card slider on them. You can just huh? slide them through Ooh. the door. What? That's right. A, take the no that works. Yeah, you can like t- you can put the little like lock. You can like move the little lock thing and slide the key card in and unlock the door. I've tried it; it never worked. That's because you're not an expert craftsman. Mm. I haven't seen you break in the oh. shit. So what you're saying, Swanson, is that you are a criminal who has broken into countless places and stolen countless goods? All right, look, I'm. I, that sounds I'm not like a lawsuit, right? that sounds like it's worthy of the death sentence. If you ask me. No, actually, for the first time ever, since I can't figure out who's right or wrong here, we're going to do a challenge round. <laughs> what? Stairmaster, hit yeah. the theme. All right, I've got a safe here. Oh. You see it? Yeah. Yeah, that's been in the room the whole time. Uh... You know what you guys are going to have to do? Hey, Keo. Oh. Yeah? Look at that safe again. Ooh. <gasps> That's right, pal. He opened it! Oh. Using only a plastic you... credit card. Yeah, what can oh I say? <gasps> they don't call me Swanson, old Sticky stupid. Swanson for nothing. Wait, no, they call me that for a different you... reason. They don't call me old Key Card Swanson for nothing. So I said, you've moved me to tears with the... What? Whoa. Why are you uh, crying, Keo? Keo, what's, what's wrong, man? This is, a, this is amazing. This is beautiful. This is... Swanson, you've showed me something so beautiful, so powerful today. Yeah? Swanson, thank you. Thank you, Swanson. Uh, you, thank you're, you. You're welcome. Yeah, you win. I'm inside the safe now. You can't crush me. Ha ha ha. Wow. He really did uh, sort of add himself into the safe. Well, I don't know. Can't safes get crushed by a hydraulic press? Crush safe! Oh no! Do we want to crush all that gold and diamonds inside the safe? Crush diamonds! Please do! They're shaping me! And my balls! The di- Hmm. Well, uh... Listen, Stare, why don't you get on out of there and we'll talk about what we watched this week. I can't. It doesn't open for me inside. Oh. Uh, well, I already used the one key. Uh-oh, I already and, used and, my key card. Yes, and Swanson's thief meter is totally empty now. He has to rest before he can use it yeah, again. I have to, to, yeah, I have to take a long rest before I can use it. No. I guess you just going to have to crush it and hope that I shoot out. Uh, all right, Hydraulic Press Guy, do your magic. Well, he just he pipes that in, doesn't he? Ah! Well, Stairmaster's been saved, wow. and the safe has been destroyed, along with all of our goods. It's a Christmas time miracle. Wow, all those priceless diamonds are completely shattered. And wow. embedded in my body. Thanks, hydraulic press guy. Wow, he's leaving with the gold. I mean, we should probably stop him. Nah, it's probably what he, he deserves. And Ray Romano's driving him off. Wow. You mean you mean Manscaped's official celebrity, Ray Romano? Yes, that guy Wait, was, was here th- earlier. Wait, was this whole thing a heist for them? Was this their last heist? Oh no, there's a serial killer. Oh god, their eyes. 
Oh, you hate to see it. Yeah, it's a whew, wild time out there. Luckily, we're here. Wow, the serial killer's walking away with the gold, Swanson. Yeah, he, well, uh, we can't I'm not going to stop him. <laughs> anyway, uh, this week we watched a uh, show featuring a very interesting man. Yes, Warner Herzog. Uh No, we watched The World According to Jeff Goldblum, and now we're going to talk about it. Uh, the second Disney Plus show that we watched, The World According to Jeff Goldblum, finds Jeff Goldblum uh, investigating various things that we just sort of do every day, like wear sneakers or eat ice cream. Or eat sneakers. There's a whole, there's a whole wonderful world out there of shoes <laughs> that we've yet to experience. And Jeff Goldblum? He's going to tell us about it. What I like I, about this uh, opening... Such sights to uh, show you. <laughs> what I like about this opening is that it sounds like the opening to a 70s detective show. Where it's just Jeff Goldblum <laughs> sort of walking around. It's like... I mean, he also has I was, a I was getting ready to watch... Like it. Yeah, I thought like we were about to watch Goldblum in like Mannix or something. <laughs> Goldblum is Columbo. Just, uh, just, uh, I got I've, one more uh, question. I've stumbled onto another, uh, erotic murder mystery. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got one more question for you, uh, sir. Anyway, so, um, this is weird, this is a weird episode, at least at the start, because Jeff Goldblum seems to be fascinated that people are going to spend exorbitant amounts of money for shoes. And I don't Why, know. Uh, are you covering up your, uh, little tootsies? Please. Maybe it's yeah, just me, we'll uh... As someone who's previously worked in sh- in the shoe business, uh, but I'm not that uh, yes. I am not at all fascin- I am not at all amazed that people are willing to spend upwards of thirty thousand dollars for shoes. We've never talked about it, but Swanson was the inspiration for uh, the Cobbler, yeah, starring Adam the, Sandler. Yeah, the classic Adam Sandler joint where he's making shoes. Swanson's the one who designed the poster for the Cobbler movie where Sandler is really <laughs> massive for some reason. Yeah, the, the one where... Can you explain the thought process behind that? I wanted to show that Sandler is a larger-than-life figure. Oh. But, but in that movie, he really entirely was not. Yeah, but you know how he is, like himself, he's a larger-than-life figure, and I wanted to sort of convey Imagine that. Imagine if you were watching, like, a Western, and a giant Adam Sandler just appeared over the horizon and was walking towards the town, and everyone started panicking. Yeah, imagine it. <laughs> imagine it! I'm imagining it, and this sounds like the Ridiculous Six, but slightly more interesting. <laughs> So yeah, a lot of this seems to a lot of this first episode is Jeff Goldblum being like, "So you pay how much for shoes? Interesting, interesting." And you uh, wear two of them. He went he went down to this like shoe lab where they got like skeletons in there. <laughs> yeah, uh, so they're like, yeah, it's a T eight hundred. They go to like yeah, they go to, to the Adi- Adidas's secret shoe research lab, which is and like they, it's like how Jack and Dad- how you pronounced Adidas as well Adidas. Yeah, Adidas. Is, is that like the true pronunciation that I didn't know I think about? It's just or is that just silly? Being weird. He, <laughs> he's very, he's very uh, playful in this. Yeah, he's got a playfulness to him, especially when he talks about Woody Allen. Yeah, which pissed me off the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. You oh, just... Stare hates enthusiasm. Yeah, in this case, I did. It's... Stare was like, his positive energy is making me the mad. The only time I was actually actively uh, mad at Jeff Goldblum came at the end of this episode, where he just kept talking instead of opening the fucking box with his shoes in it. <laughs> he spends like a solid minute just being like, okay, are you ready to see these shoes? We're going to open the shoes pretty he says, soon here. He says, listen, he says, listen if, you, if you don't want the mystery to be unraveled, you need to skip ahead 90 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah. He was really counting on, I was deliberately like, Mentally, manually interfering with my brain chemistry, so I want to get those unbo- that dopamine rush. He, yeah, good, uh, well, yeah. Now we know why he was talking about the dopamine rush halfway through this program is because the payoff of these shoes was well, the payoff was that we get a pair of slightly underwhelming shoes. I have a W on them. Yeah, like that. I love this because uh, so they go to this secret shoe laboratory, which is uh, the weirdest part of this because there's just some lady running on a treadmill. It's like I'm in an <laughs> '80s action movie. <laughs> yes, it's like we're in sci-fi. fucking Total Recall. 
And Goblin was like, I didn't think we'd get to see her nude on the computer. <laughs> yeah, like, he's like, her we're looking at her so skeleton. Large. Um, it's and, like a pepperoni. And then they start doing experiments on Goldblum where, like, they have him... Jack into his brain! Yeah, they... <laughs> and the what res- uh, emotions am I feeling right now? And the result also looks like something that you would see on a computer screen in an 80s movie. <laughs> his, his gleeful levels are off the charts! They, they're like, wow, you really are a good actor because you're able to fool our probably very high-tech sensors. <laughs> So anyway, Goldblum is trying to make his own shoe, which takes him to the shoe surgeon, who is uh, a renowned... The cobbler. Yeah, he's a renowned cobbler. He's a renowned shoe uh, creator, uh, made shoes for, I guess, LeBron James, among other people. Anyway, he's known as... So how good are you you guys at making a contempt face on cue? Mm, I'd like to say it's probably the the Oh, that's a good face you're making right there, Swanson. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty... (laughs) Yeah, it's a face. Yep. It's pretty much my default expression. My favorite part about the the um, scene with the shoe surgeon is that uh, they left in what seems to be just a very random thing where he asks him if dinosaurs are real and then (laughs) Jeff Goldblum looks at him and then says, what? Yeah, of course dinosaurs are real. (laughs) And it seems they seem to imply that the shoe surgeon is a flat earther. (laughs) <laughs> Am I the only one who got the implication from the way Goldblum talks about him later? Oh, I thought there was a dark secret behind Jeff Goldblum. Uh, well, I mean, I don't think so. He no, he seems to pretty to. emphatically state that they're wrong. He tried. Well, he very nicely said that they're incorrect. <laughs> yes, which is probably nicer than I would be if someone. Anyway, I'm thinking the Sioux surgeon is a flat earther, which I find hilarious that someone who deals with feet would think that the Earth is flat. I mean, the Earth is flat when you talk about feet distances. Maybe that's why he thinks that. <laughs> and there's no way to walk from one side of the Earth to another. It's impossible. Think about it. Yeah, I guess you. I guess he has. I a don't point. think your shoes would last. <laughs> well, not if you have regular ones, but the shoe shoe surgeon can get you. Yeah, some. the shoe surgeon can get you some bland black shoes. Maybe that's why he's a flat earther, because he's hiked to the edge of the earth and back. Oh yeah, he's seen it all. Also, what this uh, program taught me is I should just go design some shoes, because apparently you can just do whatever you want and people will buy it. Yeah, uh, the we see think... him uh, in like a interstitial framing a <laughs> pair of golden crocodile shoes he made. <laughs> also, a pair of shoes with light, dead mosquitoes. Wasp. Dead, there's a dead wasp in it, yeah. And the, his rationale for making it is that no one ever put a dead wasp in a shoe before. <laughs> <laughs> Which and Goldblum did not push back on this at all. He just fascinated yeah, by he, it. Like, I, I wonder if there was an outtake where Jeff Goldblum said, "Huh? Why did you? Why? <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> what uh, purpose why, does this? Why, pu- <laughs> for what reason have you done this?" What does this uh, do? Are getting like that. it's also a great juxtaposition to the people in the Adidas lab who are like doing all of these high tech ways to find out the most comfortable way to like make shoes, and then there's oh, just yeah, this they make, guy. They who's... make fun of Jeff Goldblum's posture. Yeah, they they call the way he runs a bop. I think they were calling him gay, and he just didn't realize it. You think? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. They seem to imply that that was a real term they like to use when when uh, talking about the way your foot hits the ground. Yeah. Is that what the is that what the kids these days mean when they say something's a bop? <laughs> they they say like the center of your foot hits the ground first or yeah, something. They say that's a bop. Anyway, yeah. So as huh. I mentioned, the payoff to this is that we see Jeff Goldblum open up some shoes, and uh, he must be a really good actor because he's way more interested in these shoes than I would be. I'd be like, wow, uh, yeah, well, the shoes these were made for him. Uh, That's why they have the W on them. I guess true. Uh, he did make shoes that were uh, they were just for Jeff Goldblum. So, the most interesting thing about the shoes are the thing that no one could see if you're wearing them, which is that the under the tongue is zebra print. <laughs> that seems very unethical. I don't think it's actually zebra. It's a it's a print, not a hide. Uh, stare. I think. Okay. 
But I would have respected him more if he had gotten zebra hide on his shoes. I mean, he did make uh, a very big point of saying that the wasp died of natural causes when he put them in the shoes. So. <laughs> that that was a really strange addition, wasn't it? Yeah, it's very suspicious. Yeah, it sounds like he killed the wasp. I'll be honest. <laughs> what are these shoes? They bind mortality and consumerism. Yeah, what exactly is their definition of natural causes? Does that mean like he found a wasp and, and like, put it, it in a jar? Days. <laughs> yeah, he followed a wasp around with a tiny little camera and was watching it. And then he put it inside the shoe. Yeah, after it died of old age. Yeah, he took it to a nice wasp retirement home and let it live <laughs> out its final days before putting it inside of a shoe. As sort of a also, wasp Jeff- mausoleum. <laughs> yeah. And Jeff Goldblum opens up a box with a shoe in it that has, like, fake grass on it. And he's like, oh, wow, that's great. <laughs> Your shoes treat this wasp as if it is linen. <laughs> so if you guys were designing a shoe, what would you make? Uh, well, there would be springs at the bottom so you could jump high. Oh, okay. Uh, my shoes would just look like Sonic's. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? You took mine. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Which Sonic? Classic Sonic. Adventure 2. Oh. <laughs> I, I knew it was going to be that way. <laughs> oh, you know what? I would want my shoes to look like shadows. <laughs> At, would it? Yeah, I want to have her shoes too. Yeah. Uh, Nike, you need to make that right now. <laughs> Hover shoes, do it, Nike. Cowards. Just do it. Also, there was a part where he was talking to black people. Oh, yeah, he talks with some basketball stars. And and he basically makes him play its modern-day slavery. You you think? I'm pretty sure they got paid on that. (laughs) Oh, well, I don't think they wanted to play basketball, Jeff Goldblum. I'm pretty sure that the directors told them to throw that game so Jeff Goldblum looked like he could actually play. (laughs) Yes, so it's slavery. All right, sure. Um, (laughs) Come on, I'm trying to... Go with it. Come on. Let's play with this a little bit. You want me to play around with slavery? <laughs> yes. Imagine at the end of the episode, we we just see Gold, Jeff Goldblum holding a chain <laughs> and those, all the... <laughs> oh, no. Okay, maybe all those, I was wrong. All those, and classic slong, all those... and classic song, Fuck Bitches Make Money starts playing. <laughs> what? And he and he starts walking and reveals that all those basketball players are now in a chain game. <laughs> okay, imagine if they had shot the game and like all these guys end up being so bad that Jeff Goldblum just repeatedly dunks on them. <laughs> like we just see numerous shots of Jeff Goldblum hitting like the rim and like hanging on it. And the guy and the team is like, "Oh man, we can't do anything. Will anyone save us?" And the camera pans. And it's and Kareem so Abdul-Jabbar. I was going to say Bernie Sanders, but that's funny, too. <laughs> Bernie Sanders can't play B-ball. You've seen him do those three-pointers. P-ball's not... Look, P-ball's not what he used to be. <laughs> He's barely older he... than Jeff Goldblum. They're about the same age, give or take a decade. Bernie can, Bernie can actually make some shots. I don't, I'm just not sure if he could actually play <laughs> an actual game. All right, so, okay. It's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar shows up, and then behind him is Bernie Sanders. <laughs> And he said, I'm just here to introduce Bernie Sanders. <laughs> they need to do an episode about Bernie. How great he is. <laughs> Where Jeff Goldblum is just distracted by Bernie Sanders. Like, fascinated by Bernie Sanders. <laughs> and it just becomes a biopic about Bernie Sanders. Yeah, basically just a half hour campaign ad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, why not? I think Disney would like that. Uh, They're not threatened by him at all. No, well, they wouldn't be threatened. The, their corporate interests wouldn't all be threatened by a candidate like Bernie Sanders. Now I'm looking up to see... He hasn't, he hasn't directly called out the corporation at all. <laughs> hmm. I, has he not called out Disney? I don't think he has. No, he definitely has. He's talked about how they're not paying the people at Disneyland oh. well enough and all that. Oh, good on him. I love you, Bernie. I'm sure they would love. I'm sure they would also love it as a company with a rich history of anti-Semitism. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, apparently, Jeff Goldblum endorses Hillary Bernie Sanders. 
What was it? Yes. What? Who? Who? Hillary Sanders? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the fusion? Oh, no. <laughs> yes, Jeff Goldblum apparently, quote, supports everything Bernie Sanders does. Oh, so they really could uh, get an interview going between the two of them. But also he has a giant portrait of himself. Hmm. So who can say... How do these... Ha- how do these facts combine exactly? Well, they're both what I found when I searched for Jeff Goldblum, Bernie Sanders on Google. Hmm, fascinating. Anyway, uh, so we get uh, the second episode is all about ice cream, which means that we get uh, an extended sequence of Jeff Goldblum eating some ice cream. Yeah, the, both I at the beginning and end of this. This I couldn't handle this one because I didn't have ice cream. What, so too much better. joy? I, no, I was angry. I didn't have ice cream. <laughs> I guess what true. Is, why don't you get that? <laughs> I guess true. I did want some ice cream after watching this first, this last episode that we watched here. Um, Do you, you guys want to hear something controversial about this episode? For me? You don't like I ice bet cream? It's be controversial. You want a hot take? All right. If it, Kiorin, be forewarned. If you are about to say that you do not like ice cream... <laughs> We're going to get into a fight. We're not gonna. We're gonna sandbag that bit, just so you know. Be warned. So, so here's the here's the deal about ice cream, fellas. It's overrated. Not that good. No, no, wrong. <laughs> What's better? So get this: Jeff Goldblum gets in an ice cream truck with this lady, and he's so he's so happy to be there. Yeah, he's just happy. And a lady he's had to pretend wow. that she's not annoyed. Wow. <laughs> you guys really didn't like that. <laughs> I I asked no, you I what, love ice cream. I asked ice you what a better ice cream. Well, ice cream's the best dessert. I asked you what was better than ice cream, and Stairmaster decided to continue. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing's better than ice cream. Nothing. Well, now I don't I know what the actual the truth best. is, Keo. I wish I was made out of ice cream. But the truth is, somehow I've made it through this episode without having any desire for ice cream. Oh, oh right. see, the moment he started talking about peach ice cream, I wanted some ice cream. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like really well, satisfied tonight. I was very interested tonight. when they talked about the generational divide and what people wanted for ice cream. I, I will I, agree with Keo on one. Well, I don't know. Maybe Keo thinks differently. But I think the one moment that made me not want ice cream is when we get to meet this uh, person who's described as a taste provocateur. <laughs> which sounds like a title someone else should give you and not you should give yourself. Yeah, and then he takes Jeff Goldblum out into the woods. Yeah, well, yeah, I thought I thought he was gonna kill him. <laughs> he gets in. We, well, we do get introduced to him in like a Hannibal esque setting where he's making <laughs> bone marrow ice cream. <laughs> listen, listen, I I put bones in the ice cream, they but bring, I ground up into a dust. The bones really bring out the flavor of my ice cream. Uh, and he, and look what I have here: blood. <laughs> you know what else this needs? More blood. Stab, stab, stab. <laughs> yeah, he's so psychopathic that he se- he yells stab as he stabs people. <laughs> Mr. Goldblum, there's one type of ice cream I haven't made yet. And that is ice cream made with human blood. <laughs> oh, that's uh, fascinating. I know a guy who can get you some uh, fresh cadavers. So yeah, he meets with this guy. My uh, friend, Mr. Epstein. <laughs> Uh, people think that uh, he's uh, dead, but in fact, he's still uh, very much alive he, uh, and took active in the criminal to, uh, underworld. Stop his vital signs for twenty-four hours. Can you imagine if they put out an episode about Epstein still being alive? <laughs> Man, yeah. you mean, where like Jeff where he makes him going undercover to investigate, or he's like just doing the same format no, he, as usual? And he's very this cheerful is, this about is, it. He's very cheerful and happy and just fascinated by so He's like meeting me. he's meeting with so, like uh, the security guards who got <laughs> tell who were in charge of guarding him. It. He's just like I I decided then, to meet with two he, security he, guards who were on He just wants to know how the operation went down. <laughs> and he, he makes a point to point out that Epstein's above the law and no one can ever stop him. <laughs> You are all serfs to us. <laughs> Enjoy your cake. So Goldblum goes through the woods with this guy, and we get a lot of references to uh, Jeff 
Goldblum poten- potentially tripping balls. <laughs> that would have been funny if he had laced it with something. He, yeah, he like made a magic mus- mushroom ice cream or something. <laughs> that sounds good. That's terrible. <laughs> Mushrooms and ice cream? <laughs> But this guy also puts, like, corn and ice cream and all this shit, so I don't know. And then um, they eat it with the band corn. Yeah, it was very weird. They were, uh, Jeff Goldblum uh, asked if they were uh, if they were freaks on a leash. Uh, ever since I was a teen, I was uh, fascinated by the new metal movement. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's, like, 78. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Thanks, Watson. <laughs> Um, we also get him interviewing uh, Ben and Jerry, and there's this really wild part where I think Ben says that he thinks that the enjoyment of ice cream can be traced back to breast milk. Yes, they want milkies. Yeah, it's a pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe ice cream just tastes well, good, bro. Mm. What did what did he say? Like he saw a baby in Euphoria or something? Yeah, and he thought like, oh, that's probably why people like ice cream or something to that effect. He probably said it more eloquently. But how this, how do you how do you see the expression of Euphoria in a baby's face? This is the future Bernie Sanders wants for us. <laughs> the government will give us all mommy GFs. The Ber- do uh, Ben and Cherries have a Bernie Sanders flavor yet? Yes, I thought they did. Well, you're the expert. They did. They do. They, they do. Did. You I, didn't I, I know can, about this? I can, I can fully confirm this. Called? They do. Is it called the one percent? <laughs> it's called the Bernie's. It's called. Well, that's kind of on the nose. Eat the rich. <laughs> it's called eat the rich. <laughs> no, I would oh. love it if it were called eat the rich. <laughs> well, now it's called the Bernie's back because it's back, but before it was called Bernie's yearning in twenty sixteen. They're introducing... I, I'm proud to announce I have a new Ben and Jerry's flavor. It's called Eat the Rich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what do they put in this ice cream? Though? It's it mint good? chocolate. Or is it... Look? What, you mean the actual Bernie Sanders? Uh, it's a hot cinnamon ice cream with one very large chocolate disc on top and a very stiff butter toffee backbone going down the middle. Oh. The chocolate dish represents all the wealth that has risen to the top 1%. The backbone represents Bernie's steadfast determination to unrig our economy. And the hot cinnamon is our political revolution holding politicians' feet to the fire to make America work for working people of all races and genders. Well, is hot cinnamon ice cream good? or uh, Cinnamon what's, ice cream good, the... yeah. Yes, that's good. I've never had it, so you guys are going to treat me to that right after we record this. <laughs> sure thing, buddy. We're going for ice cream. So my favorite part of this uh, ice cream episode is when Jeff Goldblum performs an experiment on a group of soldiers. (laughs) He just starts starts giving all of these hungry soldiers ice cream. Hold on, on, it's sailors. He's on the USS America. Okay, sure, it's sailors, but it's also... (laughs) uh, It's also a group... It's also an experiment that he's performing on sailors. By giving them ice cream and then also having them, like, recount memories. <laughs> it's weird. Similar to how he started talking about wow. dopamine rushes out of nowhere. At the end of this one, he starts talking about nostalgia. And it becomes, like, a weird pitch for Disney Plus's business model. Wow. Tasting this really brings me back to Hedita. Yeah? <laughs> what else? No, Exp- expand Hedita on that. Is the place where that war crime happened. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that crime. All right, the Hadith of Killings were a series of killings on November 19th. Tell me, tell me what it's like to what? visit the crime scene in your head. What's it, what's it feel yeah, like? Well, what do you, what do you see? We know that Stairmaster has a very uncanny gift where he can see the murders <laughs> as they happen. You want me to talk about murdering 24 unarmed Iraqi civilians? <laughs> yes, tell us about it. <laughs> well... The first thing I felt was recoil. <laughs> Twenty-one times. All right, Swanson. Swanson, Stairmaster kind of no-sold your commentary on this uh, nostalgia speech. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought we would just go with the. <laughs> I thought. No, it's it's fine. I just wanted to step back and talk about how that's something I hadn't thought of, but it's really true. Yes, that is... it is. 
Yeah, I mean, Disney Plus is based all on making you wa- want to watch things that you remember from your childhood. And then Jeff Goldblum also talks about nostalgia for a while. And also, there's also there's subtle references in both these episodes to Disney stuff. There's people wearing Disney shirts, which I'm pretty sure they don't. <laughs> they're not just wearing because they're because they felt like it. The lady in the ice cream truck mentions right. Disney. There's Disney cartoons that are being interspersed in between everything. It's honestly a little so off-putting. Basically, this ice cream rep- this ice cream episode is just Disney propaganda. Yeah, but really, I just want to eat ice cream. I don't really want to see any Disney stuff. They're gonna come out with some Disney ice cream that has mind control. Oh, it's gonna be like a Mickey Mouse devices shaped. in it. Boy, they already did that, didn't they? The Mickey Mouse shaped ice cream bar. That's a thing, yeah. I'm sure they have yeah. it. I'm sure. I'm sh- I'm sure it all exists already. I'm saving my tummy for the Bernie's back. You. Ice cream. Which we're all, which we're all gonna grab after we're done recording yes, this. Yes, our local Ben and Jerry's, right down the street. Trademark. Is it? Is there actually a store called Ben and Jerry's? There's yes. many. Yeah. <laughs> That's a restaurant, Keo. Well, it's I a parlor, I, thought it was I just guess. A... But for some reason, I don't think I've ever, I, I've ever registered one in my head. Yeah, I mean, they exist throughout the uh, United States. But most, I think they're most well known for being in grocers' freezers. Oh, yeah. Of which the oh. Bernie Sanders flavor, I don't think, is available in freezers. Oh, it better be in the freezer of my local grocery store. Well, can I interest you instead in the Tonight Dough? <laughs> what? Which is Jimmy Fallon's ice cream flavor. Oh, I'm interested in like pouring that out on the floor at the grocery store, man. Or uh, my personal this, favorite, this the Americone Dream. Ideology. Which is Stephen Colbert's flavor. Remember when he used to be cool? Yeah, what a guy. I remember that. <laughs> Where he made uh, moderately entertaining satire. Yeah. yeah, back when it was easy, when it was way easier to make satire about a certain demographic. <laughs> but now he's just like an SNL watching boomer. Yeah, what a guy. With with milk toast political commentary. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, grab some Ben and Jerry's and take it to our prisoner. All right. Wait, what prison? We have a prisoner. You guys, wait. We had a prisoner for eight days now. They are talking about me. Kia, <laughs> when did you capture famed director Werner Herzog? Well, presumably before we started recording, since he's been here throughout. Well, I needed a, a real professional to make a voiceovers for us. So I've, I've had him captured down there doing them. Just nonstop? <laughs> oh, you know, I'd prod him and make him record something once in a while. Not nonstop. Television is a way of compartmentalizing. Oh, wow. He's the delirious, Kiel Rain. Listen to him talk. <laughs> when was the last time you fed him? Like three days, but we'll give it some ice cream and he'll feel better. No, he won't. That's empty calories. That's what you need when you're starving. It's the opposite. No, you need full calories. You need full. So, so you can be full. Look, all, all I know is that you, uh, he'll be happy to get whatever we can give him. Well, that is true. Yeah, I guess. Beggars can't be choosers. All right, well, do you guys have any final thoughts on the, the world according to Jeff Goldblum? No, uh, it's a great program to have on in the background that you're not paying full attention to. It really, <laughs> I think more than almost anything we watched on this program, this is the easiest one to just sort of leave on and then still get the gist of what's happening. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, be real with you guys. I put it on in the background the second episode and just listen to it while it's gaming. I don't think you missed anything pertinent. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, it's sort of a very easy going experience. That said, it's also uh, I don't know. It does. It seems very worthless. Yeah, like I like it. You know, I like Jeff Goldblum. It's uh, he's he's okay. Uh, Do better. But like, I don't know, man. I I don't need it. <laughs> it's not necessary. It's it's not needed at all. Yeah. This is a uh, I think a light tune out. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give it a tune out. Though it's not bad by any means, it just doesn't have much of value to yeah. me. 
I'm gonna give it a tune in. Your your dad will probably <gasps> like it. Wow. <laughs> this is, I think, the first I can't, time. I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. Tune out. <laughs> we were about to have a TV tuners first. No, the bit was not worth it. But, uh, yeah, that's a tune... The remorse was too strong. <laughs> that's a tune out for the world, according to Jeff Goldblum. Uh, and that's, a, that's about it for this week's episode of the show. Uh, we'll be back next week for more TV goodness. Until then, keep watching. Bye. It's over. I am found it. And now it's time for the TV Tuners Fact of the Week. Uh, Stairmaster has never eaten a carrot before. <laughs> <laughs>